Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about one of the most important concepts of object-oriented programming and that is polymorphism. We are going to simplify the topic and this is part, the second part of the eight-part series uh, of object-oriented design. So let's get started. What is polymorphism? So polymorphism is the ability of an object to take many forms or behaviors, right? Like I mentioned, it's a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming. And basically, it allows us to write code that is more flexible, reusable, and easy to maintain, right? So let's take an example. So let's say we have this structure. So what we have here is we have a shape class, which is the super class, uh, which has a area as a method, which is calculating the area of the shape, right? Now with polymorphism, we are extending that class and creating three new subclasses which is of the type shape so which means it is a uh, for example a circle a square a triangle right but each shape has its own area calculation formula right so with polymorphism we can write a single method to calculate the area for all shapes uh, this is basically because each shape can be treated as an instance of a common superclass which in this case is the shape right now polymorphism this is inheritance so there are two ways in which we can achieve polymorphism one like we saw was inheritance basically a subclass inherits properties and methods from its superclass right this allows the subclass to behave like the superclass right which means uh, it can be used interchangeably uh, with the superclass in your program right and the next one is using interface Interface basically means that you are defining a set of methods that a class must implement, right? So interface basically allows different classes to share the same interface, which means they can be used interchangeably. So now let's take a polymorphism example and let's start by working backwards, right? So uh, let's say we have this main function. What is this main function doing? This main function basically is defining an array of shapes, which is two uh, uh, shape objects in an array. And it is putting uh, in index one of the array, a circle object and index two of the rectangle object, right? So if you see the shapes array is of type shape, but we are able to put circle and rectangle inside the shape array, right? And then we are iterating over the shape array and printing the area of the circle. Right. So if we define the interface and the classes, uh, let's see how it will look like. So the interface is going to be very sim uh, simple, right? We are going to define an interface shape, which has a uh, area, get area method, which returns a double, right? So that is an interface. Now this interface is going to be implemented by two classes. One is the circle and one is the rectangle. So the circle is going to look like this. So if you see in the first line, the class circle implements shape right inside that it is taking a private property which is radius and that radius is a property of the circle shape right and you are adding a constructor to the circle shape and uh, implementing the area method which is pi r square right the rectangle implementation is also very similar so if you see class rectangle implements the interface shape this uh, class has two properties one is the length and other is width because the area calculation for the rectangle class will be different than the circle class right so we are defining a constructor and then we are again implementing the get area method in this case the implementation is different it is length into width right and now if you we come back to the main program you will see that when we are iterating over the shapes uh, first of all, in the shape array, when we have put in shape array index 0, new circle 5, basically we are using the constructor to create the circle object, right? And giving it the radius value of 5, right? Uh, and for the rectangle, we are again using the rectangles constructor method and giving it the value of 10 and 5 for length and width respectively, right? And now when we are going to call the shape.get array, if you see in the at the end of the main function, uh, that is going to print something like this. So the area of circle is uh, whatever the area is and the area of rectangle is 50, right? So that is 
how the program is working. So this is a very classic example of a polymorphism and this is a uh, very similar pattern and actually exactly pattern is what you are, you are going to follow when you are going to implement polymorphism using uh, interfaces. Now let's look at one of the more important topics within polymorphism uh, which is sometimes confusing so we'll try to simplify that which is called method overriding right. Method overriding is a subclass provides its own implementation of a method that is already defined in the superclass right. So let's take another example. So let's say we have a class called animal right and we have a method which is make sound. The make sound method prints animal is making a sound right so for the animal class. Now if we have a subclass which extends the animal class say the subclass is dog that extends the animal class which then we can override so the dog class is an animal right the dog is an animal so it is a, is a is the inheritance so when you are extending the animal class you can by default you are getting the implementation of make sound uh, printing animal is making a sound right but for dog you want to change that behavior so how will you change that behavior you are overriding if you see at the rate override you are overriding the make sound method and changing the implementation to print woof right so this particular thing is called method overriding so we are basically overriding the make sound method which is already defined in the super class which is an animal right so now if we have a have a sample class with a main function you will see that uh, we are initiating an object creating an object of animal we are printing animal dot make sound and then uh, we are initiating an object of dog and again calling the dog dot uh, make sound right and what will it print any guesses uh, i hope you have guessed right yes the animal dot make sound is obviously going to print the animal is making a sound and the dog dot make sound is going to uh, print woof because the dog dot make sound is now taking the implementation which is overridden inside the dog class it is not taking the implementation of the animal class right so that is method overriding now let's look at some of the applications of polymorphism right polymorphism is one of the most used concepts in object oriented programming and uh, also when you are you are implementing any kind of a now, not only implementing but also designing in interviews or in any places uh, generally interviewers look for these kind of patterns in your solution right you have to define contracts interfaces classes to be able to be reused right you have to write clean code so these kind of concepts it's 99 percent you will never be asked what is polymorphism but when you are designing the system you will have to design the system in a way where you are implementing the solution or designing the solution keeping polymorphism and these kind of object oriented concepts uh, in your design right so let's look at some of the real life applications where polymorphism is used uh, first is user interfaces yes uh, polymorphism is heavily used in user interface design uh, basically to create any reusable components right that can be used in multiple contexts for example say a button component uh, a button component can be created once and used in different parts of an application uh, each time maybe with a different behavior for that context right but buttons are used across the uh, user interface so you can basically use polymorphism to uh, to reuse that component right next is database programming database programming is also a place where polymorphism is heavily used uh, basically to abstract away the underlying database system right and provide a unified interface basically to work with the data Right. This allows applications uh, to be written in a data database agnostic way. Right. So you are the, the implementation that you are writing, the code that you are writing, is agnostic to what kind of database that it is implementing. Right. So that basically means that if you have to change your database, migrate, or say you are using a SQL database, you have to move to a NoSQL database. So those kind of underlying database system logic can be completely uh, hidden. Right. It can be uh, abstracted. Third is plugin architectures plugin architectures are again very critical uh, because for example say when there are different modules that can be loaded at runtime right uh, and used interchangeably right for example say if we are taking a text editor right so a text editor could support multiple spell checking modules for example right each 
module might be implementing the same interface but using a different algorithm to do a spell checking right that is possible so that is where in plugin architectures polymorphism is heavily used in games and simulations uh, polymorphism is often used in game game design uh, simulations to represent different types of objects and behaviors right so for example say a game might have different types of characters right each with their own set of abilities and behaviors right but all implemented using polymorphism right uh, next is financial applications yes financial applications in financial application you represent different types of financial instruments such as say uh, stocks bonds derivatives right those are all different types of financial instruments so each instrument can be represented using a common interface right because those are all types of financial instruments uh, which allows basically easy manipulation and analysis of the financial data right and there are many more applications of polymorphism so hopefully this video was useful thanks for watching